Okay, good morning. Uh, I have had a heck of a day figuring out uh, this thing. I thought I had it figured out pretty well. And then, uh, then my gear wasn't cooperating. It was a whole thing. But uh, I've, up until now, I've made a lot of videos, mainly for AP Literature and AP Seminar. Those things definitely lend themselves well uh, to video. How to, how to be a better actor is one of those things that at least I haven't figured out uh, how to teach via distance learning. And, uh, but there are some things that we, you can work on. Uh, a little quick story. Uh, when I was getting out of the Navy, I was heading back to college, and I had to prepare an audition. Well, I hadn't prepared an audition um, in many years. Uh, and I had to I had to work by myself. I had to coach myself to get ready for this audition. So today we're going to talk about a couple of things that I've talked about in class. If you've had me for drama class, uh, in beginning drama I was just starting to get to this stuff. In advanced drama I've talked about this. So with a monologue or scene, we often talk about something called the trigger. It's the image or sense memory that puts you there. And by there, that's in character. So what gets you there? And when it comes to sense memory, we remember things in terms of smell, taste, sight, hearing, and touch. Those are the things that uh, trigger our memories. And when preparing a monologue or even before you're going to go on stage, having this trigger or this idea prepares you to, to bring something out there on stage. Uh, this is less applicable in improv, of course. Improv's a whole other animal. How you teach improv via video, I have not yet discovered. But today we're going to focus on uh, things that you can do with the monologue assignment, particularly for Drama 1. Things you can work on with a monologue, and you don't need me or anybody else there. You can be working on these things. So there's two approaches, and I've talked about these before. There's the as-if approach, something emotionally similar. So that's a substitution. What in my experience would make me behave similar to the character? So this is where you, you have your sense memory. So for example, when I smell redwood, it always reminds me of my grandfather uh, down in California. Uh, my grandfather used to carve, carve toys for me and my brother out of wood, redwood stakes. So I, the smell of redwood is always going to bring an image of my grandfather. Uh, I'm, I'm very visual. I'm a very visual person. And uh, visualizing things is really important to me as well as hearing. But each one of us, our memories are triggered by a different sense. Some people taste something and it brings them back. So uh, there's a certain kind of Mongolian beef that I like. And and then just remembering that taste brings me back to Ellensburg, one of my favorite uh, Chinese restaurants where I would get Mongolian beef. And that memory brings me back. Now, what does that have to do with acting? So uh, that brings us down to the magic if. What if I were? What if I were this character? So... Uh, so if I were this character, you have to ask some questions. Who are you then? How are you feeling right now? Are you tired, sick? Where are you? Who are you talking to? What do you want? So this one, this is more, this is more of a mental approach. This is more, more, more of a process. This is you. All right, if I were a broken down wrestler trying to reconnect with my daughter, I, how would I feel? I'd feel 
vulnerable. I'm probably sick. I'm probably tired. I'm not feeling well. Where are we? Uh, in the movie, it's a beach. The movie, The Wrestler. Uh, many of you have seen me do this monologue before, but this lesson bears... This lesson is applicable to any monologue. Any, any monologue. Less applicable to Shakespeare, because in Shakespeare, it's all in the language. This approach with Shakespeare leads to a very indulgent performance. So I, w I wouldn't use it with Shakespeare, but I would definitely use it with, with, with a contemporary piece. Who are you talking to? I want well, talking to my daughter. And then, so where am I? So I'm at the beach. Or maybe we're at a house. And now, you know, who am I? I'm, I'm Randy. All right. And then, then when I get, when I get to these questions, that's when I start thinking about my sense memory. What do I see? Taste. Touch. Smell. Hear. So if I'm walking through this process, I'm thinking, all right, what do I hear? I hear the ocean. I hear the ocean. I smell the salt water. I see her. She's crying. I have a bitter taste in my mouth. I can feel the cold wind on my skin. So you might even see in the video, just in my eyes, I'm processing these things. And that's, that's what creates a real performance, is that you're putting something, you're, something is underneath the language, and that something is you. <coughs> now, now, there are there are different opinions on this, that this is all nonsense, that it's a waste of time, that really all you need to do is know the lines and know what you're trying to do and, and try to get that objective. But many times, these tools and approaches help the actor uh, pre prepare his performance uh, and gives the actor something to emotionally work off of, especially when you don't have a scene partner, especially when you're training in isolation. So these are things that you can do. These are exercises you can do by yourself and prepare a monologue or even prepare a scene, prepare part of a scene. Uh, something you guys can do is that you guys can connect with each other and say, all right, we're going to do this scene. I'll play this character, you play that character, and you can do it. You could do it over Zoom. Zoom is our new friend. Zoom is our new video conferencing friend. So you can you two can pick a scene and agree and you can rehearse back and forth using these techniques. It's a bit of a stretch, but uh, artists artists have always had to find a way. Uh, when the Black Plague shut down all the theaters in Europe, uh, did Shakespeare just give up? No, he went and wrote King Lear. Uh, artists always have to find a way in the most difficult of times. And these tech, these are things that can be worked on. All right, so what do I want? I want to reconnect. I want her to forgive me. All right, so, so you've got the magic if, what if I were him, these are the things that I'd want. This is more, like I said, this is more paint by numbers. This is also applicable to AP Lit when you're looking at a speech. Who is this person? How are they feeling? Where are they? Who are they talking to? What do they want? You could use the same process to analyze a prose piece and come up with a pretty decent analysis of what's going on. Um, the as-if approach is emotion. It's all pure, it's pure id. 
All right. So what's emotion? So let's say that you're not, see, I am a father and I have a daughter, so I have that emotional experience. But what if you don't? What's emotionally similar to wanting somebody's forgiveness? Maybe it's a parent, maybe you've disappointed a friend, and there's all the associations that you have with that emotional experience. You can you could bring that to the piece. Alright, so we're gonna we're gonna scroll down. This is this is a piece I love this movie. Uh, if you've not seen The Wrestler, it's 2009, uh, it, it's, it's quite good. Uh, it's just so, 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 so well done. Uh, and uh, the, the actor is Mickey Rourke. And he, he is so good in it. Uh, so vulnerable. And watching for me watching the the actor that is more all right so, so sometimes you've got the actor that uh, that tears the place down you know he's a he's a he's a a desk a desk pounder you know that's the pounding the desk you know a lot of verbal pyrotechnics and uh, you know, uh, you think of like Denzel Washington or James Earl Jones, or you think of uh, actors that are really big and broad. Uh, those performances have their places, but my favorite kind of performance is the performance that's that's held in, the held in quality, where it's it's bubbling beneath the surface. It's all it's all beneath the surface. For me, that's what's really exciting. Let's see if I can get my get my fat head. Nope. Get my fat head out of the way. I'm gonna move my fat head up here maybe. I've had some trouble with this this morning. I'm gonna make myself a little bigger so you can kind of see what's going on. All right, so uh, I really like that held-in quality in acting, where the it's it's all right there beneath the surface, and then they can just blow up. But they don't. But it's there, and you see it. To me, that's much more emotionally compelling. All right, so we're gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna walk through this, and you're gonna watch me mark this script up for sense memories. I just want to tell you I'm the one who was supposed to take care of everything. So that's that requires an image. And so this would be, you know, an, I'd work this image. Maybe it's uh, I promised my daughter something and I didn't deliver it. I promised and I blew it. So I'm going to tell you kind of a personal story. My wife and I uh, we were supposed to take our daughter to kindergarten roundup at, uh, at Jenkins Creek. This is when she was five. We got the date wrong. So we showed up and our daughter was so excited about kindergarten roundup and she missed it. The look of, the look of disappointment in her eyes haunts me to this day. So I might draw on that. And a lot, and a lot of you might think, well, gee, gee, I don't, gee, Dyke, because you've got, you've lived, you've lived the life, you, you've had these experiences. I have none of these experiences, but you do have experiences that are valid and mean something to you that you can draw on, and you shouldn't discount them. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with the uh, kindergarten roundup. And so when I read this line. What do I remember about that day? I remember it was sunny. I remember my daughter being excited. I remember smelling the antiseptic of the school. And I remember the look in her eyes. I just want to tell you, I'm the one who was supposed to take care of everything. You see, you, maybe you see that? So I start to work that image. 
I just want to tell you. I'm the one who was supposed to take care of everything. So you, you work the image as you say the line. You re This is your rehearsal process. Now in performance, it's too late. In performance, if you're dredging up memories of your child's disappointment, that's too late. This is what you do in the rehearsal process. I'm the one who was supposed to make everything okay for everybody. So this is me trying to, I'm thinking about, I'm using the, the as-if approach, as if I was talking to her. So I'm connecting back to this kindergarten roundup. It just didn't work out like that. And I left. I left you. So this is me apologizing to her. So I remember she ran to the bathroom and we had to coax her out. And I'm thinking about her crying, seeing her crying face. I'm hearing it. I'm seeing it. Uh, so if I'm putting it together, I just want to tell you, I'm the one who was supposed to take care of everything. I'm the one who was supposed to make everything okay for everybody. It just didn't work out like that, and I left. I left you. You see that? Hopefully that comes across. I don't know. I don't know if it does. I don't know if it does. Picking my pick my ear itches. Just don't just don't touch. Just don't touch it. Don't touch your face. It's bad times. Uh, and I left. I left you. You never did anything wrong. I used to try to forget about you. So here. You never did anything wrong. So now maybe I'm gonna I'm gonna switch this image. Do I move my where do I move my big fat head? I'm gonna make this a little smaller. I'm gonna make me a little smaller. Move it down there, maybe. Alright, so let's come over here. There we go. You never did anything wrong. So what's the image I might there might think there? You never did anything wrong. This is I'm I'm she's she's really angry. She's throwing things. I'm remembering my daughter having a meltdown. And what am I trying what's my action there? I'm trying to soothe. to soothe. But here I say some I say something pretty awful. And that's I'm admitting a hard truth. I'm admitting a hard truth. So I remember how disappointed my daughter was that day that my wife and I we had gotten the date wrong. We had gotten the date wrong. And her crying and what we had to do to try to settle her down. So what I did is I took the I actually called the I called the kindergarten teacher and I actually set up her very own kindergarten roundup day to introduce her to all the different kindergarten teachers. So we did it after school and I, it wasn't the same, but I tried to have a special day just with her. And so I remember taking her. I remember taking her to the mall. And they used to have these big balls that you could roll around in. And I remember putting her in the ball and how happy she was. And uh, that's that's what I would that's what I would I would look at here. You're my girl. You're my girl. I would remember that. You're my little girl. So I would write the mall. So these are I'm assigning specific sense memories to the to this piece. My little girl's smile. And I remember her smell when she was born. I, I know what you guys are thinking, but 
No, I mean, babies have a, have a smell, a very unique smell, and it's a very comforting smell. Everything about a baby is designed to make you want to take care of it. Uh, their, their little faces, their little eyes, everything about, a, everything about a child is designed to make you want to take care of it because <laughs> they scream and they keep you up at night. And if they weren't absolutely adorable, you'd want to throw them through the window. That's just a hard thing to admit. So, it, it, so remembering my little girl as a baby, that's what really helps me. And you, you can do this from your own life. It just takes, it, what it takes is you sitting down and taking the time to know yourself and know your experiences. Your experiences have value. Your experiences have value. You have something to bring to a role. You have experience to bring to a role. It could be a time, you know what, I tried out for something and I didn't get it. Using, using that experience. Or I failed a test, or I disappointed my mother, or I disappointed a friend. Those are all things that an actor can draw upon to make their piece real. And so now we've got AP Lit Kids, we've got a shift. And now I'm an old, broken-down piece of meat, and I'm alone, and I deserve to be all alone. I just don't want you to hate me, okay? So, and now is my shift. So what's my image for that? What do I draw upon? Uh, I remember one time uh, I, had, I had hurt my shoulder really bad, and I couldn't, and I, I couldn't, uh, I liked to work out, and I couldn't work out and I couldn't push my kid on the swing, and I remember how disappointed my son was, he was only four at the time, how disappointed that I couldn't pull him back on the swing. And so that, that shoulder pain slash son disappointment. And now a lot of you might think, well, God, this is, these videos are all dykus marking up texts. These video because really whether you're doing AP lit or whether you're doing uh, advanced drama or beginning drama, your work is really the same: making sense of the text and then communicating that sense to an audience. Really, the really the goal is the same. the The difference between AP lit and drama is that in AP Lit, once we've gotten a sense of the piece, the way we communicate to the audience is through our writing. In advanced drama, or in acting, or drama, or whatever we're going to call it, you're communicating the sense of the piece to the audience through, through your words. You, you, you bring that, your analysis, to the audience in the form of a performance. But really, the, the process is the same. It's really the same process. Uh, I, I really only teach one class. How to, how to make sense of a text and then communicate it to an audience. How to use language effectively. How to be effective with language. That's really what I teach. That's Whether it's drama, whether it's seminar, whether it's AP Lit, uh, that's really what it comes down to. Uh, I am a language teacher. I teach how to use language effectively. All right, so we're, we're just about done, and I deserve to be all alone. I just don't want you to hate me, okay? Now, there, there are two words that I have to say to my kids a lot, and those two words are, I'm sorry. I have to say that a lot to my kids. Uh, this is a very, this, acting is very personal, and... Uh, to be an actor means that you have to reveal yourself to your audience. And so I have taken some risks here to re reveal a little bit about myself to you uh, and to anybody that might uh, anybody that might come across this video. This, this is personal stuff. You have to be willing to reveal very personal stuff to your audiences. 
Now, some might disagree with that. Some might say, no, no, it's all pretend. Uh, this is this is but one method. So oftentimes, oftentimes, you'll hear people talk about something called the method. Or method acting. So method acting, this is method acting, what we're working with here. It's using the actor's experiences and feelings to inform the work. That is method acting. The other approach is the is the text based. So this is the this is the inside out approach. And then there's the outside-in approach, where it's that it's a thorough knowledge of the text. You you play the language, and all of this comes out in the language, uh, which is much more effective for Shakespeare. So what we're working with here is something called realism, naturalism. And it's what I was going to get into in beginning drama before we ran it. This was all stuff I was going to teach when we got into beginning drama uh, with our monologue unit. I was going to teach these two approaches, uh, but of course we didn't get the time. And then my advanced drama class, I've given you guys this lesson before, but it's, it's worth going back to these things because these are techniques we use to, to, to make it real. So, uh, again, I'm not a desk pounder. That's not the kind of acting. The ranting and raving isn't really what makes me interested. It's the held-in approach. If you really want to see a great actor, just a master of this, uh, Gene Hackman is just a master of this, of that held-in approach. Denzel Washington is also another good one to watch. Uh, he can be the desk pounder, and he can be held in. What makes his Equalizer film so compelling is that he isn't a screamer and a yeller. He, it's all held in. And then BAM! He comes out at you, right? That's, the, that's what makes it interesting. So, uh, what, when you're alone, and when you can't, uh, when you can't actually practice acting, uh, it's good. There are things you can do. You can get monologues together. You you can practice these things that I'm I'm laying out for you. You can also watch films and you can watch other actors and you can ask yourself questions like, what do I what do I like about this performance? What do I not like about this performance? What and as you start to study acting more, you you begin to see more techniques that these actors do. You start to see the things that I talk about. Circles of concentration. You start to see these things that I talk about, where it's, a, it's, it's immediate. It's right there. And then it's to yourself. And then it's out. So you might watch. I'm gonna make my I'm gonna make my head bigger. This this could this could go very wrong. So I'm gonna make my head bigger. There's my big head. There's my big head. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna act now for you. So I'm gonna I'm gonna demonstrate what I'm talking about. I'm take my glasses off. I'm gonna get into character. Take my smudge guard off, and. So I'm going to demonstrate what I'm talking about. I just wanted to tell you, I'm the one who was supposed to make care. I'm going to start again. I blew the line. I just want to tell you, I'm the one who was supposed to take care of everything. I'm the one who was supposed to make everything okay for everybody. But it just didn't work out like that.
and I left. I left you. I used to try to pretend that you didn't exist, but I can't. You're my girl. You're my little girl. And now, I'm just a broken down piece of meat, and I'm alone. And I deserve to be all alone. I just don't want you to hate me. Okay? And scene. So you might have seen where my eyes went in all of this. And like I said, this is a monologue I've done for you guys many times. It's a monologue I really like. And what's changed in auditioning is the acceptance of doing scenes, of doing monologues for movies. Because like it or not, like it or not, movies, like it or not, movies are now our literature. Like it or not. And when you're picking a, when you're picking a, a monologue from a movie, it's really best that you pick something that's not iconic. So The Wrestler is a pretty famous movie among people that enjoy movies. But it's, it's not, you're, you're not doing Captain America's speech in Endgame. So when you're doing something that iconic, you're going to lapse into imitation. So anyway, I hope that this particular video is helpful for my actors. I hope it at least gives you some tools that you can go back to work on. And just to kind of review what we talked about today, we talked about the idea of the trigger. That's the sense connected image. That puts you in character. Uh, we talked about the magic if. That's uh, that's the magic if is a substitution. Subs sty <laughs> sub sty substitution. That's uh that's like um if I were this character. Or were, what is this like in my experience? What is this like? What is this like? Oh no, I got that wrong. That's as if. The as if. What is this like in my experience? So maybe you're maybe you're not a broken down wrestler. You're a teenager. You've never had to do anything like this. So what's it like to have let somebody down? We've all done that. That's what you would draw on. And then there's the magic if. What if I were? That character. What if I were that character? What would I do? And remember, this is this remember this from improv. There is nothing a character wouldn't say or do. As soon as you say, as soon as you say, well, my character wouldn't do that, you're all, you're shut down. My character wouldn't do that. There's nothing a character wouldn't say or do under the right circumstances. Under the right circumstances, you might steal. You, you might have to defend your life with deadly force. You might have to lie. You might have to let someone down. You might have to make yourself vulnerable. 
under the right circumstances, there's nothing a character wouldn't say or do. I swore up and down that I would never put content online for my students until I had to. I would, my opinion was always, I teach exclusive content. You've got to come to my class to experience it. I'm not going to put stuff online. I'm not going to have a website. I'm not going to make videos. That is not my style. But look where we are. Look what's happened. There's nothing a character wouldn't say or do. I'll never do Greece. I'll never do Greece until I did it. So there's nothing a character wouldn't say or do under the right circumstances. Your goal always, at least in my opinion, the goal is always to create the appearance of truth under imaginary circumstances. And this is a uh, this is Sanford Meisner. I recommend reading Sanford Meisner. You might even YouTube him. Uh, if you Google Sam, let me get my fat head out of the way. If you, uh, I'm gonna move my fat head. Yeah, where, where, where'd it go? I'm gonna move my fat head. I'm gonna move my fat head up there. All right. So if you, uh, if you Google Sam, if you Google Samford Meisner, there's a whole bunch of interesting stuff about him. He was a very influential acting teacher, and then the opposite of Samford Meisner is, God, I'm blanking on it, I'm blanking on it. Oh, David Mamet. So I would recommend David Mamet's True and False. And I would recommend Sanford Meisner's On Acting. Those are both two really good books. Uh, that I would recommend. I would also recommend uh, Uta Hagen, uh, Respect for Acting. Uh, these are these are these are people you can look up. You can YouTube them. Uta Hagen, Sanford Meisner, and David Mamet. If you Google, if you YouTube Uta Hagen on acting. You might get some interesting videos on it. Sanford Meisner, I'm sure you get some interesting stuff. And David Mamet is actually, you don't know him, but he's actually written quite a lot of movies. And there's a lot of, oh, no, what's going on? No, get out of there. We don't, we don't dismiss. We don't, we don't need that popping up. All right, so that's, that's where we're going to leave it today. Uh, again, this is a lot of stuff that I've talked about in class already. But if you were in beginning drama, you hadn't yet had this lesson. And these are things that you can work on by yourself and study to learn more about acting. Uh, and you can hopefully bring to an acting class when we, when we reconvene. I hope you guys found it helpful. I hope you at least found it entertaining as I screwed stuff up in the video. Uh, I, I love you guys. I miss you guys. Uh, I think about you a lot. And uh, I hope this video finds everybody well. We're gonna we're gonna call it a day though. We're gonna stop. Cheers.